Welcome to the lesson on genetic technology. In this lesson, we're going to discuss the use of gel electrophoresis. We're also going to discuss genetic engineering, selective breeding, and recombinant DNA. All right, let's get started with uh, gel electrophoresis and how it's done. We're going to take a look at a video animation, and I'll talk you through it at the same time. Okay, here we are at our DNA gel electrophoresis animation. And a gel electrophoresis is a method used in biochemistry to separate mixed DNA fragments to estimate the size and or isolate the fragments. DNA analysis is used in a wide range, but typically what you'd hear most, the most common use of this is that it's used in forensic science to uh, identify suspects as having been uh, involved with a crime or exonerate suspects from having not committed a crime and also to determine either uh, paternity or maternity in child cases in which you would want to know who the parents are or if the child belonged to the parents, etc. First, we're going to discuss here how to make um, an agarose gel. And basically, all you take is uh, agarose, which is a powder, and mix it with water and some other chemicals. You microwave it till the agarose melts. And then what you're going to do is you're going to let it cool down to about 50 degrees Celsius. And then you're going to add that chemical mix. And what happens is that ethidium bromide binds to the DNA and it makes the uh, DNA strands um, glow when they're exposed to UV light. And notice the note here that this is a chemical that's very toxic. Okay. So next you pour the gel into the, to the uh, tray or tank and you're going to place a comb into the liquid gel and then you're going to let it set for about 30 minutes. And literally, what's going to happen here is that this is going to turn into basically what's the same consistency as jello. Now, the comb is inserted as a mold in here. And you can see it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom, it goes partially in. And the comb makes wells in which the DNA samples are later placed. So the comb is removed and your gel is ready. And here you see the wells I just spoke of. These were the spots where the comb was inserted down into the gel and after it's solidified, um, this makes a, a well for you to place your DNA samples. The gel is like a complex matrix of pores and the fragments are migrating from one side through the gel to the other. And the DNA fragments are negatively charged. So they migrate away from the negative toward the positive. They're repelled from the negative toward the positive. Because of the pores, short DNA fragments migrate easily and long DNA fragments travel slower. So short DNA tra fragments travel faster and further through the gel, while long DNA fragments travel slower and less distance through the gel. Therefore, the DNA fragments end up being separated by length. Here's how you can to prepare your DNA sample. You take very small amounts. You amplify it. It's a process called PCR. More on that later. And a loading dye is mixed with the DNA sample so that we can see the DNA itself as it moves through the, through the gel and uh, 
we can also see how long it's taking as to when, how long we need to leave the electricity on for. You load your DNA samples into the wells. And then you turn your electricity on and the DNA moves through the gel from one side to the other. After the electrophoresis, the gel is ready for analysis and you would take and expose that gel to ultraviolet light, a black light in other words, and the DNA bands would become visible that you stained earlier. Okay? Each column here where the DNA travels is called a lane. That's a, a term that you'll hear used. One of the lanes is always um, the DNA ladder which is also called the standard, to which the other DNA samples are compared. These are applied to estimate the size of the fragments. Here you see the base pairs, and you see a thousand base pairs all the way down to 50 base pairs. Again, this verifies that a thousand base pairs would travel very slow in less distance through the gel, whereas your 50 base pairs would travel very quickly and further through the gel. You compare your other DNA bands with the latter DNA bands to estimate the fragment length. Now a practice for you. Answer this next question. Which suspect DNA matches the crime scene sexual assault DNA? Okay, let's next talk about genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is altering the DNA of an organism. This is done by first fixing gene errors by locating the bad gene and replacing it with a corrected copy. This is done by inserting a gene from one organism into another. For example, using the DNA code for the production of human insulin and inserting it into bacteria to produce more insulin. This of course could be done to help people with it that have diabetes as a problem. Nice diagram here showing the process of doing that. We'll talk more about recumbent DNA here in a little bit. Or how about this one? Pretty neat case. Inserting the gene for, for, for fluorescence in jellyfish into cats producing glow-in-the-dark kittens. This causes their skin to, skin to glow, not their fur. Well, how wild is that? Another example is inserting the gene for spider silk into the milk glands of female goats. Neat article here cited for you if you are interested more in that. And we take a look at how that's done. We have goat A here and goat B. And what happens is you use what's called a restriction enzyme, which cuts DNA at a specific location. In this case, it's the GATC, uh, and where this, this uh, G also cuts down here as well. You can see the line, the green line I've drawn, is where the restriction enzyme would cut the DNA right there. Well, this does the same thing over here on the other goat DNA. Now what happens is you use the um, opposite letters, Okay, and by the way, you notice it's cut it in a spot where it's the same forwards and backwards. So GATC is the same as GATC uh, in the other direction, 
and that restriction enzyme would only cut the DNA in that spot. Okay, back down here now, you now take your spider DNA, which has been cut opposite, okay, and now inserted into here into the goat DNA. The spider gene is inserted into the goat gene. Notice the letters are exactly the same. So you're replacing what was a GATC with a GATC from the spider. You're replacing a C, uh, CTAG with a CTAG from the spider gene. So exactly the same uh, base sequence. You then use a DNA ligase, which, which all this does is glue the two uh, pieces of DNA together. And then you have what is called a recumbent DNA that gives you a goat that produces milk that streams out like spider silk. Pretty wild stuff. Another example, really great example here, is what is called golden rice. And what they do here is they insert the gene for the production of vitamin A into the rice to be shipped to third world countries and reduce childhood blindness. Great concept. However, the company built in a kill switch so the rice cannot be replanted. Of course, why would they do this? Is so that the third world country has to buy the rice from them uh, and can't replant it and grow it themselves. Therefore, they make money on it. All right. Next, let's switch gears here and talk a little bit about selective breeding. Selective breeding is letting only organisms with desired characteristics produce the next generation. It's really two kinds of this. We have what is called hybridization. Hybridization is crossing organisms that have different traits to bring together the best of both organisms. For example, crossing the disease resistance of one plant with the yield ability of another, such as what is done in corn. So you take one corn plant that is very disease resistant and a different corn plant that has a great ability to produce a lot of it and combine them together um, to produce the best of both plants. Another type of selective breeding is what is called inbreeding. This is the continued breeding of individuals with similar characteristics. This is often done with pets, specifically in dogs. This can be very risky though, because you also can get disorders that can be inherited, such as hip dysplasia in dogs. Laboratory retrievers are, are well known for this. Okay, and lastly, we have recumbent DNA. Recumbent DNA is DNA molecules made up of DNA from different sources. You have to locate the gene. Then you have to perform what is called polymerase chain reaction, PCR for short, to replicate it many times. You saw PCR mentioned earlier when in our gel electrophoresis. All you're doing is you're taking your DNA and replicating it many times. It's also called amplifying it. In step three, you use restriction enzymes to cut the target DNA at just a particular location. You insert the desired gene into the target DNA. And then you clone the examples your example cells to produce large quantities. That'll do it for our lesson on genetic technology. More to come as we answer questions in class and discuss this further um, during the review process.